let's talk about my new yellow marling raglan. This is take 576. <laughs> Welcome to the first episode of 2024. My name is Moran. Today is Wednesday, January 3rd. It's almost 2 p.m. and it's raining here. And this room is built out of a light construction, so I hope it will not get too noisy. I also hope we will not have any alarms or bumps coming in simply because I don't have any other time to record an episode this week, so I hope it will help. Let's keep fingers crossed. Happy New Year to you all. I wish us all happy 2024, as much as it can be happy. Thank you so much for all of you who sent, for all the heartwarming words you sent our way and for your wishes for peace in our patch. Yeah, I wish 2024 brings some relief and it will be a little bit better for us here. I wish all of our hostages will be hugged by their loved ones, will be back home soon. I wanted to keep this episode more on the creative side and I wanted to mainly to share everything about my new yellow marling raglan and I also wanted to um, share some information regarding the granny kit cotton in my Etsy shop and answer a few of your questions and, and yeah and I also wanted to thank you for making my end of the year sale so so successful so thank you so much uh, yeah i think we can dive right into this yellow marling raglan i finished it on the last day of 23 i think it was on the last day i i i think maybe i finished it on the day before last on the 30th Anyway, I decided to, although I finished it at the end of 23, I decided to include it in my new uh, yellow sketchbook. And this is now the first finished object in my yellow sketchbook. When I plan to put all my knitting and crochet projects during 24, and I decided to include this one, you know, because of the color thing. So now it's here. I think it was a few weeks ago when I finished knitting uh, the second self-drafted raglan, topped out raglan, and I shared here on previous episodes that I followed a book by Elizabeth Zimmerman, um, Knitting Without Tears, that's the name of the book, and I also followed a blog by Fringe Supply and Co. Uh, where Karen, I think Karen is the name of the writer of the blog, uh, she shared how to knit yourself a top-down raglan with all the mathematics and calculations and I followed it when I first knitted my first tee and then I knitted the second one and I was very very happy with the result. This t-shirt was originally knitted for a wedding we were supposed to have at the end of December in the family but it was cancelled for now due to the war. Anyway I was really happy with the result and I really wanted to knit myself another one. I felt I have a lot of good information you know, regarding the fit that I like for my size and, you know, for my personal preferences with raglan sweaters. Um, I think I shared it before, but I prefer the way it looks on me when, when the neckline is more high and closed and like, you know, more tight. I think it holds better everything that is included in my 
in the front side of my body. Anyway, I felt I have quite a lot of good information regarding the size, regarding, you know, length of this and how long this should be and the yoke depth and everything. I had everything written and I wanted to start and make myself a new raglan, but this time I wanted it to be a little bit thicker. So I knew it will be with another gate, with a different gauge. So I knew I will have to recalculate things, but I knew the principles and I felt quite comfortable with, you know, starting with a new raglan, uh, self-drafting knitting. I didn't know at first what exactly it will look like, but I had, I, I imagined like a general silhouette of how I wanted it to look like. And I think I will share everything about the yarns first because for me it looks like this is the major, you know, like personality of this, of this project, the, the, the yarn that I chose to work with. So first let me show you how I uh, decided to put my first project in this yellow sketchbook so i took a picture of it when it was blocked on saturday evening and yeah this is this is you know what let me first show you how it looks this is the first time i wear it it took quite a while for it to to block and to get dry and i am very excited to wear it today and this is how it looks I made quite a puffy, like not, not too much, but a little bit of a bell shape, puffy shape here, and a little bit of a bell shape here in the hem. And the neck is a double knitting. And yeah, let's go through the details and let's start with the yarn. So when it was wet blocking, I took a picture and I really, really liked how it came out. So I printed it and uh, made like the front page of this project uh, and then I put all the yarn labels that I used so this sweater is knitted uh, with two strands of yarns held together so let me show it to you first I started with using um, the whole sweater is you um, is knitted using my granny kit cotton in color cream held together with two yarns so i started holding it together with ilimani sabri i think the color is color 50 and then i switched to hold it together the cotton yarn together with a madeleine tosh single also a fingering, also the Illimani is a fingering weight. So, yeah, the Illimani is, uh, it's 85% um, organic cotton and 15% baby alpaca. And the Madeleine Tosh is 100% superwash merino wool. The Illimani has 400 meters per skein and the Madeleine Tosh has 384 meters. The Madeleine Tosh is color brass and the Granny Kit Cotton has uh, 125 meters per 50 grams. And I made this, the entire uh, project with two strands held together, these two or these two. Uh, so you know what? I also wanted to share another beautiful thing with you. When I opened these yarn labels to attach to my new sketchbook, you know, to write the details and to put all the yarn details in it, I opened up this label of Madeleine Tosh yarn and look what I found inside. Can you read it or... You know what? Let me read it for you. It's written at the back side of this 
yarn label. It's written, all colors are the friends of their neighbors and the lovers of their opposites. And this is by Mark Chagall. And I think he stole it from me. I'm not sure when we met last, but I think he stole it from me. Anyway, I was so excited. I shared it to here with my, with the Mondays Club, and I was so excited with this uh, sentence that I decided to leave one page empty because I wanted to write this sentence as the front page of my 2024 sketchbook, uh, 2024 knitting and crochet sketchbook. Yeah, I was very excited with this. It's it's really what I feel about colors. Anyway, I placed all the color, la all the yarn labels here and I also um, mentioned here that I used um, one and a half skeins. I, you know, the total, this, this raglan is made out of one and a half skeins of the Illimani Sabri color 50 and almost a full skein of the Madeleine Tosh single held together and I have only this yarn left um, out of nine, nine balls that I uh, used. So it's almost nine balls of the Granny Kit Cotton, almost one skein of the Madeleine Tosh and one and a half skeins of the Illimani Sabri cotton and alpaca blend. Um, and yeah, when I started to knit, I started from up from here, I started holding these two um, and I only had two skeins of the Illimani in my studio and quite, you know, at the beginning I realized I wanted to be long sleeve sweater and I, and I knew two skeins will not do the, will not do the entire project. So I started to look for, you know, to order the third skein that I needed, but during the war days, it's too complicated with the shipping. And I knew even if I will find it and shipping will be reasonable, uh, it will take a lot of time to ship and to, it will take a lot of time for it to arrive. And I, I really wanted to, you know, to, to knit it and to be able to wear it during this winter. And I, I did eventually, I did find the yarn, uh, but the shipping was really crazy expensive. So I decided, you know, not to go for it. And I said, okay, maybe I will knit myself a short sleeve again, uh, raglan. But then I realized I have the Madeleine Tosh, uh, which is quite, you know, quite close in color. But when I imagined it to working together, I imagined more like a visible contrast between the yarns that eventually you can hardly, hardly see the contrast. Anyway, I started to knit and um, the method for this raglan is that you knit flat. Uh, in the right side, you make the raglan increase. You start with, I started with, um, casted, I casted on 68 stitches on four millimeter needles and I started to knit raglan increases while I cast on one stitch at the end of each row and this way you can shape your back uh, without any uh, German short rows. So this is the method I use for the top, I used for the three top um, self-drafted raglans that I made. I started to knit and I started to think uh, how will I incorporate the two colors? Then I, I thought of all, you know, all the options, maybe to knit one yarn from this, one yarn, one row from this, but, and then I thought, okay, I will knit with the Illimani uh, combination, cotton and Illimani, and then I will decide as I go. And then I thought maybe I will uh, add the new, introduce the new color, the new, the wool, with stripes uh, and I when I imagined it I saw it more contrast and I thought it will be a, a lot more visible but as you can see you can hardly hardly see uh, the chain you can see it but it's not as visible as I imagined it so I needed it um, you know even after I separated body and sleeves 
and I started introducing it, let's see, here. So I knitted down, all the way down to here with the Illimani and cotton combination. And then I put aside the Illimani and worked, sorry, and worked with the wool and cotton combination. I knitted five rounds from the wool and then I went back and knitted five rounds back with the Illimani and then again five rounds with the wool and five rounds with the Illimani and then I cut the Illimani and continue knitting all the way up down until the end of the ribbing with the wool and uh, cotton combination. Uh, I made as I told you, I wanted to shape this part a little bit and to decrease. I made a few decreases here. I had to rip out, I think, maybe two times before it came out as I wanted it to be with a little bit of a bell silhouette. Uh, and then I, after I was happy, I knitted the rib one by one and uh, finished it up bind off using the Italian bind off, which I really, really love to use and gave it this you know, the Italian bind of look. And yeah, and I was very happy. I um, actually, I knitted the neck hem uh, before, a lot before I finished the body and the hem, just because I wanted to, you know, to be sure it's, it's in the right fit that I was looking for. So in the neck hem, I picked up stitches. I think I picked up stitches, let's see. What I did here, I took all, I took the note, uh, I told you I put all the information and all the details of my knitting uh, on my, uh, on a note, on my um, note app on my iPhone. So I took this note and uh, re rearranged it and took out all the unnecessary information and I printed it. So if one of the knitters here will want to have all the details, you can just copy this or take a photo. So anyway, I picked up stitches with a 3.5 millimeter needle. I picked up 98 stitches and knitted, knit one and purl one rib for 10 rounds. And then I knitted three rounds of double knitting, just, uh, you know, for to make it um, for the folding part. And then I knitted Two, 10 more rounds of the ribbing, knit one pearl one. I fold it and then I think I shared a video on the previous uh, episode where I picked up picture, I picked up stitches from down here while binding off. And right before I closed it, I placed an elastic cord to just to keep this part uh, shaped you know, when you wear it, you, I don't want it to get stretched. So there, it, it's, it's there, it's still there, the elastic, tiny little elastic cord. Uh, and I inserted it, I think double um, of this cord. So yeah, after I made the neck hem, I was so, so happy with the way it looked because I really wanted it to be more, you know, more like chubby, more visible. And uh, as I said, I like it to be more like a high uh, neck and closed. So yeah, and then I finished the body for the sleeves. I picked up stitches here, started to work, work with the wool and cotton combination. And then, uh, um, yeah, cotton and alpaca combination. And I did, I think pretty much the same thing for this, you know, changing with the stripes in, in the sleeves. But not just like in the body, in the sleeves, I decided to end up with the alpaca. So I decided to um, do the same stripes combination as I did in the body, but quite in this part, in the lower part, before the ribbing, I changed again to the alpaca, to the Illimani, and I knitted it together with the cotton all the way until I finished the hem. And also in the sleeves, 
I did this bell shape. Let me show you. This bell shape, so I made uh, quite a lot of decreases uh, at the last row, at the last round, and then I started uh, knitting the ribbing, knit to pearl, knit one pearl one, and once again finished with, um, yeah, on the sleeves I finished with two rounds of double ribbing and then made the Italian bind off. On the hem here, I made four rounds of double knitting and after that made, made the Italian bind off. Um, and the reason I decided to go back to the Ely money for, um, for this part is just because I, I thought when I tried this sweater on that I, it feels really, really good uh, against the skin with this combination. Uh, and I was very happy with the, f with the way it feels. And I said, okay, if it's so, it feels so nice against the skin, I will, maybe I will, I, I, it will probably be better if I do the same here when it's, it's again, it's, it touches the skin. So I decided to go back to, uh, to this um, combination. Eventually, I don't feel, you know, now I wear it, uh, straight against the skin. I have nothing underneath and it feels very very good also with uh, in the places in the areas when you have um, the wool held the Madeleine Tosh wool held with the cotton But anyway, I think it was a good decision. I like the way it looks Although it's a very subtle change in terms of colors. I really really like this change I think that if you Look from close. I think you can see the difference. So, as I said, when it was wet, blocking the stripes were very visible because, you know, when the colors are wet, they are getting deeper and darker. And I really, really like the way it looked, but it didn't stay when it got dry. Anyway, it made me think of my next raglan. So maybe this is a, a stripes idea for my next raglan. Anyway, I'm very, very happy with the result. I'm very happy with the fact that now it's all, all the information about it is here in my new uh, project uh, sketchbook and that the girls here, the knitters here can, you know, open it up and get all the information. The gauge here was 21 stitches on 28 rows for four inches. Actually, I didn't gauge swatch uh, because for me, when I start a raglan in this construction, when you knit flat back and forth, this is by itself, you know, a kind of like a swatch. So I, I feel it's, why to bother? If it will not come the gauge I want, I can rip it out. And I didn't really know what gauge I want. I had to, you know, calculate as, as I worked, as I knitted, so I said, okay, this is the gauge that I achieve on a four millimeter needle. Uh, so I will, I made all the calculations according to the gauge I achieved. I hope this makes sense. Anyway, when you self draft a pattern, you, it's not just knitting, like having, you know, a pattern, you just have to follow a pattern, maybe to understand something that is maybe not written in, a way you understand it or but when you self-draft it's a lot of thinking while knitting anyway talking about self-drafting so just a little sip anyway talking about self-drafting i ripped out um one of the sleeves i don't remember which side three times it was completely done and i ripped it out three times because I wasn't happy with at first it was too wide here and I and I thought okay and I also mentioned it in my notes that I probably had too many stitches for the sleeves before I you know uh, after um, finishing all the raglan increases I think I ended up with too many stitches for the sleeves so I'm not sure if you can see it. I will try to show it 
but I made quite a few decreases here because if I didn't decrease here, I got uh, too much uh, fabric here. It was too big for me. So it took like three trials until I was happy with the way it looked. And then at first I started to, you know, decrease also all, all the way down in the arm. But eventually I thought it's only enough to decrease here and one more decrease around this area. And then I went all the way, I knitted all the way down uh, with all the stitches I had. And then I decreased, I made quite a massive decrease before uh, knitting the rib section. So yeah, I spoke quite a lot about my yellow marlin sweater. I have to say, I really, really love it. I really love the result. And I also really like it that now I have all the information for a sweater with the right fit for me, or, you know, the fit that I like these days. And this gauge is different than this gauge, so I have them both and I can, you know, it's a lot of information for a knitter who likes to knit um, something to wear. Uh, anyway, let me look uh, at my notes if I have another important thing to share with you. Uh, yeah, the double knitting uh, before the bind off I wanted to talk about. Uh, and the yarns I used, and yeah, I think this is it. For the ribbing, I changed sizes. Uh, I used, for the neck, I used a 3.5 millimeter needle. For the sleeves, I used a three millimeter short circular needle. I think it was the from the blue set of Chiago that you can, you know, pick up um, one, one tip longer than the other. So I use the three millimeter uh, for, uh, for the ribbing, I use three point, uh, for the hem ribbing, I use 3.25 millimeter needle. I hope I shared everything and if I forgot something, please feel free to leave your question in the comment section. Uh, I think it will be better to leave the question in the comment section so I can answer you there. Uh, and maybe if you have a question, maybe it will be, uh, it's possible that some other knitters have uh, the same question and they can see what I answer to you. Uh, so if I forgot to mention something, please feel free to leave it as a question uh, in the comment in, in the question, comment section. So this is it about my yellow marling raglan. Uh, another project that I busy with now, uh, I need a Sophie scarf for Maya, our eldest. Yeah, out of the same. It's it's. Actually, it's the same Sophie scarf I knitted myself um, using, using the Kashmir by Cardiff. Uh, it's the same yarn I used for my scarf. I think it was two weeks ago on Friday morning. We spent some a few hours with uh, Maya, our eldest. Uh, we had some lovely... Uh, time only parents and Maya. We had lunch together and coffee and I was wearing my Sophie scarf and she said um, Ima, wow, it's so beautiful. It, uh, did you knit it? I, I said yes and she said can I try it on? It's very uh, nice against the skin. I said it's, it's made out of cashmere and she asked if I can make her one and I was very very flattered because Maya has her own unique taste and I, I was really happy when she asked for one. So, uh, yeah, so I started to knit her a scarf and I do, uh, and because she wanted the exact same one, 
I do exactly what I did in my original, in my scarf, in the first scarf that I knitted. So unlike the pattern recommend, I increase until I have 36 stitches. And then as you can see here, I marked uh, the last increase. And then I knit a few, quite a few rows, uh, number of rows um, without any increases or decreases just to make it a little bit longer than in the pattern. I follow the long, the bigger, the, the, the large size in the pattern, but I make it a little bit longer. And now I think I will just knit a few more rows without any increases, and then I will start the decreases uh, part. So I'm almost, like I passed the halfway. Yeah, I think it will be, yeah, this long. Anyway, I will make her the same one because she really liked it. And she said, it's beautiful on you, mommy. And I was happy. And I used the same yarn that I used for mine. And because I make it longer, I will need a little bit more than two balls of this Kashmir by Cardiff. I also, last week, I visited a local yarn shop uh, because they also carry this Kashmir and I wanted it for a new scarf that I develop. I also shared it on my previous episode with you. It's located like about an hour drive north from my from our place and I visited them last week and took a, you know took some footage for you there and also I want to share with you what I purchased there but I think I will leave it for the next episode. And the last thing that I wanted to share this for this episode is regarding my granny kit cotton. Um, a few of you were writing to me and asking if I am not selling any more granny kit cotton yarns and kits in my Etsy shop. And I think I talked about it a few episodes ago, sharing with you that having all of this cotton inventory, um, handling the inventory, the packing, it doesn't bring me any joy anymore as it was in the beginning. And it's too much of work and too much. It's, it's getting darker here. I'm sorry. Let's make it fast. Anyway, I do have a little bit more uh, cotton yarn in stock. So I suggest that if you want to purchase cotton from me, you will contact me via Etsy conversation and I will send you a list of everything that is available in stock in the moment that you contact me. Um, but I have to say, you have to be patient with shipping because during war days, shipping doesn't work as in usual. I will provide a tracking number. So I use only a tracked shipping system, which is a little bit more expensive, but this is the only shipping system that I use. So I will provide a tracking number, but you will have to be patient with the shipping. It's not anything that I can affect and it's nothing under my control. So I can promise you that after we agree about the list of colors and the size of the package, uh, I will pack it and send it a day or two days after we you placed your order and I will take it to the post office. But from this moment on, I have no control of when it went out of Israel, what plan it went on, uh, what flight it was, it was go using. And I just have a, 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 a tracking number to give you and you can track your package, but you have to be patient. So if you need the cotton for a current project that you want to finish right away, this is not a right decision to order it from me. But if you want to have my cotton because I am finishing my, I'm selling out my, my stock, it's a good idea. If you liked it, if you worked it with it in the past and you like it and you want to have it in your stash and you want to, you know, own more of this cotton, I agree with you. It's a high quality cotton. I also keep myself a little stash that I want to have. Uh, so yes, please do go ahead, 
send me an Etsy conversation. We will make up what, what are the colors that you want to, to get. Uh, I will make you a, you know, a special package or we'll send you a link uh, for your package and I will send it to you. I will be more than happy to send it to you. I might do another Etsy update for cotton kits, especially for the stripes and colors kit, blanket kit, because this is a best selling kit in my shop and many of you wrote and asked if I will have it back. So first of all, if you're interested, please write to me because it will help me to plan the next order if I do do it uh, during 2024. But if I have the mood to, you know, handle the cotton inventory, packing, sending and everything, I will do it. And if I have a big demand, I will do it. So please write to me if this is something you would like to have, especially the stripes and colors kit. Uh, so I might have another shop update for uh, this blanket kit during 2024 and I guess more uh, towards the springtime. So yeah, this is regarding the cotton, granny kit cotton yarn, and I hope I answered your questions. Once again, if you have, if I didn't answer something and I forgot to answer one of your questions, please feel free to leave your question in the comment section below. But I think this is it for today. I hope to uh, share more of my works in progress. I did make, um, more progress on my coziest memory blanket. One of the knitters in the Mondays Club visited Loop London last week and she purchased a nice bundle of yarn for us and I already added it to my coziest memory blanket, uh, but I will share it with you in my next episode. Until then, let's hope for a good 2024. Let's hope it will be better. Let's hope it brings peace. Um, yeah, I wish you all a happy new year. Once again, I wish this is the most like my, in my top wish list. I wish all our hostages will be back with their loved ones, hugged with their family soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.